that's awesome. Um, uh, I know there's a lot of talk about CBDC, the UBI, and mm -hmm. why people should stay away from that. I mean, it's a trap. I mean, you know, if it's it's digital welfare is the way I look at it. Simply put, um, you know, they they're going to try to kill the economy and make people so desperate that they'll beg for a solution that they just benevolently managed to create. And right. they suck you into this system and they can track everything you do. If you buy a piece of gum, they know it, you know, yeah. scratch your nose or other things, they know it. Um, it's just control. It's just a, it's a, just a form of control. Uh, so once again, um, I'm not suggesting that Christians stay in cryptos forever. It's just for a certain period of time during the wealth transfer. Because I know there's a lot of people who believe the digital economy is a bad thing. In the long run, it is. But right. in the short term, God is opening a window for us to go through that portal and take advantage of it. Take advantage of it while the getting's good, right? You're using it as a means to an end. To go back to what we said about buying land and all those other aforementioned things, but um, but yes, uh, UBI universal basic income is a trap. Uh, the CBDCs are definitely a trap. Um, what I am recommending is that people get at least three to five bank accounts, preferably four to five. In um, once once you're out of the wealth transfer or once you've crossed the delta, so to speak, and you've started to get liquidity to invest. Mm -hmm. um, I personally recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, getting into private banks, community banks, small town banks, going back to basics. Because yeah. when I was a kid, you know, my mom would drive up to the bank. I, I go back to the days when uh, we would we would go to the the, um, the machine. And it was this big, you know, brick contraction. And remember the tubes? You put the money in and would shoop, suck it up. Yeah. And but you didn't have to look over your shoulder. You knew that that you knew who the people were. They worked there forever. Right. Uh, they had skin in the game. A lot of them were, were invested in the bank. Uh, you didn't have to worry about them stealing your money or doing a bail-in or any of that kind of stuff. So I recommend people go back to basics. Um, again, like I said, growing your own food, land, all that kind of stuff. I mean, to harp on it, but everything kind of goes hand in hand. Yes. And the bank should be as uh, grassroots as how and where you live, right? Um, right now, I'm in interviewing some banks with my realtor, Nancy, in Tennessee, that I, I gave her a series of questions to ask the manager and he came back and he gave all the right answers. I said, you know, are you adopting the Fed now? Are you doing, are you pushing CBDCs? How much uh, debt are you carrying on your books right now that you can disclose? Um, you know, are the, are the, how long have the employees been there? Uh, do they have any stock options with the bank? How long have you been in business? You know, those kinds of things. I, I rule of thumb, 25 years or more in the community is a good rule of thumb. If they're not carrying any debt now, probably a good chance they're going to carry even less as they go along. Um, good question. You That's know, you want to get a bank that is uh, big enough to be flexible and small enough to be personal. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't do that and I won't do that for people. But if you just do some basic homework and just start now, don't just wait for the wealth transfer. Start doing your preps, you know, your, your field research, like I just described, you know, have, have a couple weeks of food and water, uh, have your medicines. If you need it, pet medications, basic stuff, look sure. around your house, turn off your power for a day and see what would happen. How would you function? You right. know, mm -hmm. um, is there a plan in place? Yes. Is the military been working on this? Yeah. Because I've got some military relationships they've told me, you know, but the point is, you know, don't be that guy or gal that's out there on a bread line for three miles at Trader Joe's because you didn't do basic diligence, you right. know, prep while you can with what you have. I don't care if you have 50 bucks or a million dollars, prep, you know, prepare and God will take, you know, what you've got that loaves and fishes and honor it and, and exponentially multiply it. But he wants to see effort. He wants to see relationship on your part with him in community to move forward, not just say, hey, God, when are you going to move? He's going like, when are you going to move? You know, it's a relationship. It's a dance. When did, when did we forget that? All right, exactly. He's given us everything we need. We just need to step into it. You, you mentioned prior about the state of, of Vietnam, uh -huh. where they are right now. I mean, because the, the Dong, I mean, things are moving with that, isn't it? 
Vietnam's in a great place, Francine. They're quietly preparing behind the scenes right now to reinstate, back to your oh. IRA, RV dilemma. Now, I think we sewed up quite nicely. Um, China, Taiwan is, is getting ready to happen. Now, people have to understand that's a, another parallel thing. Mm -hmm. China has two components. They have the CCP, which most people associate with them, but she is part of the Republic. She has been meeting actively with a lot of true leaders like Nelson Chamisa, we'll talk about in a minute, in, in Zimbabwe, asked him to run for president as a Christian. Uh, he has met with, um, you know, Vietnam and Taiwan, and they've worked all this stuff out behind the scenes. It's a staged event. Everything is planned out years and years in advance. I think most people know that. Mm -hmm. um, but the China-Taiwan invasion will, I talked to SG and on about this uh, last week, it's it's only it's it's only going to be a handful of days. It's not going to be like this Ukraine thing that's protracted on artificially for months and months in advance. It's going to be a very quick mop up. Taiwan is well prepared for this. They have landmines and they're very strategic and secret secretive, like the Vietnamese people. Um, Vietnam has no problems economically since since 2010. They're averaging about a 34 percent GDP gross domestic product. Wow. It's almost number. It's if it's not number one in the world, it's darn close. Uh, they have tons of silver. They're they're tied to Litecoin. It's another uh, mm -hmm. crypto people might want to write down. Litecoin is going to do exceedingly well for this short period of time. They're tied to that. I don't know if you guys remember your history, but in 2020, during the pandemic, President Trump and Mike Pompeo put together an Indo-Asia Indo Pacific Summit in August of 2020. Yes. whereby they allocated almost a trillion dollars to the betterment of the uh, Southeast Asian economy, specifically Vietnam. Why would they do that unless the dong was going to play prominently? Mm. Also, most people don't know that Vietnam has a lot of rich Brent crude in their oceans. China and U.S. have been fighting over it for years. We wrested control for a, a short period of time over that because everybody's fighting over the resources. Same with Iraq. Look at all the countries. Why would Iraq be going back internationally unless all these countries were vying to do business with them because of what they've got? Same right. thing with Vietnam. Vietnam's just more yeah. understated about it than Iraq. That's all. Sure, sure. So, so the bottom line is, I, I think we're going to see. And again, I'm not, I'm not predicting. Don't you know? Come attack me, people. I'm not predicting a date or anything like that. I'm just giving you timelines. We're looking at a situation. Today is the 16th. Mm -hmm. I would say in the next. Being conservative, 10 to 15 days as Iraq gets ready to launch up their reforms, taxes and tariffs and all that into parliament. They're picking a speaker now. Sudani just went yesterday to Davos, just like he went to the UN in September for the first time in a long time. They got a prime minister who actually is willing to risk his life for the people, not himself, or the corrupt Iranian proxy government that's currently holding place. And I'll tie that into Vietnam in a second. Uh, you have a situation where he made an announcement in September to the world stage on the UN. He's now replicating that with Davos. He's told them we're coming back internationally. So he's setting the stage for what's to happen. As those reforms happen, Maliki and his Iranian goons are going to go nuts. Um, people think that our military is going to leave. Not a chance. We just uh, allocated 1,500 more troops there. I think it's for this, not what they tell us, but to have enough reinforcement of redundancy to what they have now, which is about 2,500 with contractors, not a lot, but enough to when Maliki and they bring, they bring the evil out and draw them out into the light, like you bring the enemy out into the light, boom. When, when we take our eyes off of Iraq and we see all these events happening with the Middle East, specifically, people might want to write this down, Israel is going to make a grave mistake. They're going to attack the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. When they do that, we are days to weeks away from the reinstatement of the dinar. At the same time, China, Taiwan, in that Middle East, South, South East Asia uh, rim, is going to do the China, Taiwan attack. And all the stuff's going to go on. The Republic of the CCP is going to work to free Vietnam enough out of communism for their dong to reinstate and silver and other things. Well, what about um, we were just hearing and I and some of the clips that you sent to me um, about DEFCON one. Yeah, what what does that actually mean? Um, which which one? Which snapshot are you talking about? Because I sent you a lot okay, of them. So I know you did. You did. <laughs> it's um, hard to keep on. them all straight. It it didn't come out as well because I was so rushed. But I'll okay. just 
Yeah. So uh, yes, yes, that's one I thought you were talking about. Um, this is this is a QCOM that goes back to uh, it's post twenty three forty six, I believe. Yeah. So this is inside kind of information. Um, it's it's talking about the uh, DEFCON and what's going on with the sea. We just had a few days ago, I, I don't know, it was four or five days ago, naval ships were vulnerably attacked in the Red Sea, Red October. Right. right. So what that denotes, thank you for the screenshot reminder, what that denotes is the, when, they, when Q says watch the water, yes. it's a geopolitical event tied to the supply chain and oil because Iran is now going to get involved and they're going to block off the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz. We're going to start to see oil prices skyrocket here in the very near future. I would be surprised if it's anything under $200 a barrel. Wow. Um, we're going to see it spike up. We're also going to see supply chain issues become harder and harder to get. So people should have already been stocking up all along and check your preps, go through your diligence, whatever you're lacking, have redundancy. Because there's going to be a period of a couple of weeks where you know, you're going to need cash on hand. Ironically, right. we're talking about the Fed dollar. Here's the thing. Going back, goes back to your original question, Francine, about what people do in the exchange. Yes, they will be exchanging for Fed dollars. That's why you want to convert it. But it's a tool. So while it has perceived value before the crash, use it, right? Like a life insurance policy, use it or lose it. Or those, those flex cards where you have X amount of dollars at the end of the year to use or it goes away, treat right. it like that. Mm -hmm. Use those Fed dollars and have cash on hand for gas, for groceries, you know, because credit cards, the whole computerized credit system is going to go yeah. to put. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation additionally that I was given a, a very simple but good tip, don't go in with 20s and 10s. What if they can't break change? Then what are you going to do? Go oh. in with fives and ones, make it easier on them. Because as you give them change, then they can give it to somebody else as well to help but, your neighbor. Yeah. Um, make sure that if you have enough supplies, Get extra anyway so that you can help your neighbors in time of need who didn't do their diligence, who didn't know to do it. Who I mean, I, I'm always amazed, guys, when I go to uh, I went to a, a Barnes & Noble last week just to get some new books for the new year. I always stock up on new books as, as the year begins to kind of feed my mind. And I look around and I can, it, this goes back, Alan, to your Joseph thing. I, I watch people, their body language, and it's so apparent to me, shockingly, that people are just so blissfully unaware of what's going to happen. People know yeah. something's up. Oh my people, God. Right? People know the, the gas station, the grocery stores, but they don't understand the magnitude of how bad it's going to get. They think it's just business as usual. And once the election comes and goes, it'll, it'll get remediated. We're not going to have an election like we typically have. We're just not. I'm interviewing Thursday, Lloyd Brunson, who still got his case in the Supreme Court. He's on his third writ of appeal. And Clarence Thomas, I'm told, is going to hear that case. And we have to fix 2020. We, we are not going to just go back. There, there, is no new, there is no new normal. There is no going back to the way that people are foolish to believe we're right. just going to tread water and, and that the dollar is always going to be king. It, it's just not true. Right. right. So do you think there will be an election this year? No, yeah. not in the way that we think. Yeah. Um, once Nassara is announced, technically there has to be 120 days for new elections. I'm convinced the military is going to get involved and do paper ballots, and they're going to make sure that the deep state cannot cheat their way out of this. Um, mm -hmm. The point of fact, President Trump is the commander in chief. I have a friend uh, who graduated the Naval Academy in summer of 2022. He showed me a picture of his diploma. He said, you just can't show this to anybody, but you can have it. I was like, that's fine. And I read it and it gave all his credentials. At the bottom, it said Donald J. Trump, commander in chief. Now I know they're doing, some have Biden, some have Trump, but the real one is Trump. And, and Trump it constitutionally is in control of the military. He has the football. So whoever runs the military runs the country. So he never left. He stepped out of the corporation yeah. into the constitution. Yeah. That's what so a lot of that, people may not realize. So will that go back to um, Alyssa's grant being what the 18th so president trump, trump will, will be 19th, be the 19th. okay Correct. okay yep. which really yep. makes sense i mean you know i mean honestly if and and i would love for mm -hmm. all of us to chat at another time 
uh, on the air in regards to, I mean, the true banking system, how they utilize our funds, uh, maritime law, mm -hmm. all this stuff, because mm -hmm. people don't realize that they've been in bondage for so long. And, you know, the Lord wants us to know the truth so that we can be free of all this, right? Right, honey. One thing I, I want you, you you brought it up before about the trust. Uh -huh. Listen, a lot of people are going to go in there and they're going to get a trust with the bank. The bank takes care of the bank. Read the small print. So okay. what what should people do as far as a trust, John? And in, in, they should in, get one, right? I think people should not rely on the bank as much as possible. They should be as self sufficient as possible, which goes congruent to everything we talked about, Alan. I'm just telling you what I've done. I, I have, have secured myself with my very blessed that God has given me a great uh, set of teammates and allies around me. This information is not all of my own doing. I've, I've got 20 to 30 people that support me regularly with information that they vet and they make sure and we pray over it. So I'm very, very blessed to be in this position, number one. And number two, have a team of this incredible caliber who just doesn't want to be front of center. So right. they kind of pointed me to do that and, and, and said, we'll give you the info. Uh, as much as we can, as often as we can, but just don't mention our names and don't put us in front of camera. All right. You know, you got to honor that. And everybody is meant to do this. So, and, and I might say before I continue, Alan, that for the 11 years I've been in this, almost 10, I was behind the scenes because I was waiting for uh, a Christian that I resonated with to come out and tell the truth. And I just wasn't finding enough of them. And the whole time God was saying, you know, you should do it. And I, I just didn't, I didn't understand that. It took me a while. So I had to repent of that because it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be disobedient. I just didn't really believe that it was my place to do it. Right. But I was just so dissatisfied with not getting the full kernel of truth out there at this level. So sometimes you got to just do what you got to do. Um, as far as the trust goes, I advocate getting a common law, irrevocable trust. I know people debate revocable, irrevocable. The most important thing is getting a common law trust because that takes you out of statutory law trust, which puts you back in commerce with the IRS, puts you back in commerce with the corporation. Right. A common law trust, a proper one, will take you off, and then you can do an LLC single person management, which the IRS does not acknowledge as a, a taxable um, uh, entity. And so it, it divorces you from their system, and you go in with, you open up that LLC with the bank, it's fine, but it ties to that common law trust so that you can do banking, but still keep your, your common law trust status and, uh, and not be dependent on the bank. I mean, that's the whole point is when people say, the worst thing people can do in my opinion is say, well, I'll just let them or the bank or so-and-so do it for me. That's how we got in this mess in the first place. Right. No, <laughs> no, do it yourself, be self-sufficient. How are you gonna go buy land and grow your own food and yet depend on the bank for central bank digital currency or UBI, it doesn't, it doesn't match. It's, right. it's, it's double-minded. So right. that, that'd be my recommendation. Yeah, that's, that's good. And is um, Starlink all connected to, uh, you know, the, the bank's currency and all that? Well, I mean, Starlink is a communication system, which is, you know, heavily Tesla backed. It's interesting because last week I just read a report about, um, Starlink did their first approved send and receive text through T-Mobile. So they're using some of the major carriers to, to carry this out. Um, but it's, it's, it's tied. It's, it's one of the ways to get, it's tied to the blockchain, which, which ties to the QFS. So it's an extenuation of it that allows the frequency of communications uh, to go out between um, communication and commerce. Basically it's a pass through, um, but it's also its own internet. I mean, the con uh, was it, uh, Tonga, I think it's Tonga a year or two ago, uh, they got Starlink. They didn't have internet at all. They're a very remote island. They now have had Starlink for a year and a half and they said it's blazing fast. It's, right. I think if I remember right, it's about 75,000 75, times faster than the internet we're using right now. So oh it's, my God. It's blazing fast. That's, that's and, a... I want to just real quick, if you don't mind, I just want to interject one thing. I, I just thought of it. Um, you were talking about Vietnam. Yeah, I wanted Iraq. to go back there. Yeah. We're talking about Iraq with phosphorus, right? Yes. You, Vietnam produces something that a lot of the world uses that doesn't think much about. 
between uh, Indonesia and Vietnam, did you know that those countries comprise roughly 60% of the world's cinnamon supply? No, never knew that. Wow. Go to Trader Joe's and Sprouts and read the cinnamon. It'll say made in Vietnam. Oh, isn't that something? Wow. Well, yeah. th now, do you think with the dong that that would, uh, I mean, because I know that there's so many uh, currencies and uh, the baskets and so forth, but do you think that dong would go first or that it would all go together? They're not all going to go together. As I said earlier, they're going to go in sections because you have to do this. Most of all, besides the insider trading portion, it's God's going to give his people time to get in this because he realizes not everybody's at the same level yeah. of acumen or financial wherewithal to get all the currencies, right? right? There's still a lot of currencies I've yet to get, which I'm going to get in the next iteration once the first RI passes. Um, but uh, no, I think it'll be, uh, Dinar will be the ribbon cutter. They'll start. And then I think it'll be the dong. And so I said, you, you have these events with, with uh, Iraq and then China, Taiwan, not a coincidence, right? Is there none right. in the kingdom of heaven? So I think it'll be dinar, dong, rupiah, and I think Zimbabwe is going to come out of the ashes with Nelson Chamisa being rightly appointed as the president there. He's already said they're going to be the breadbasket to the world as they have the most gold in the world. And I hear these, these tired arguments that, oh, I'll never get rich off the of Zoom. Oh, that's, that's a bond that's been taken out of circulation. Um, so what? It can be restored back very quickly. It says on it, if you can read, payable to the bearer of note on demand. Possession is nine tenths of the law, baby. Whoever's right. holding it is holding it. Once he reactivates all of their things, bonds, Zim dollars, et cetera, in gold, it's immediately valuable. And I've asked the bankers, are you going to take the Zim? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. Didn't talk about rates. Didn't talk, I, you know, I don't push it. I just, sure. you know, they're going to, it's going to be treated separately as a bond because it's not a currency. But this tired argument that people have this, cognitive dissonance, which goes back to your question, uh, Francine, about why 99% of the world is in darkness because of cognitive dissonance. People can't get their head around the fact that they could actually be free. They could actually be wealthy. Could it actually be that simple? Last I checked, God gave us everything we needed on this planet, and we are the ones that summarily screwed it up. Right. Give us fresh air, clean water, families, love, togetherness, trees, resource, it goes on and on and on. I, We're the ones that, oh, I could do better than God. Let me see what I can work up here because I'm so smart. Right. And I, and we're the ones that put us our, ourselves in this position. So uh, people got to get over themselves and their, their stinking thinking and this cognitive brain block that, well, that couldn't actually happen. Isn't that what they said about penicillin, refrigerators, air conditioning, the internet, cars, computers, watch, smart watches, on and on and on and on. I've heard this tired argument from haters and doubters that this can't happen. This can't happen. All that means is it's right to happen. Yeah. Jeez, the, the Red Sox 20 years ago said, no, they were never going to win. And then they went on a winning streak. So it's it, this is the year of vindication and the shock and awe when everybody, these knuckleheads that say, even in the Christian community too, by the way, it's not yeah. just non-believers. We're right. culpable also. Uh, I've had plenty of Christians laugh at me and say, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm like, is that what God thinks? Do you ever hear of Hebrews 11, 1? What happened if faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen? What happened to that? Why do Christians pick and choose which verses they're going to believe in? Oh, sure. It's all or nothing. You either believe the whole thing or you don't bother. So I'm it. tired of these weak Christians. I'm tired of this, this, this stinking thinking attitude that suggests that, oh, I can't have this. I can't. You know what? You're probably right. Because Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're also right. Yeah. Right. It's and what will you choose to believe? I am dumb enough to believe in God's supernatural abundance, to believe that he can overcome obstacles because he's been doing it my whole life. Yeah. So I have made a living out of doubters like this. And this is going to be a great year for those who held the line, who believed, who ignored the noise yeah. and stayed the course. They're going to be highly blessed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Amen to that. It, it, we've also heard too, and, and I know that you have a busy night too, um, that uh, before we go, that uh, when you revalue, um, that you will not be able to invest in other currencies, nor will you be able to invest in gold and silver. Who's saying that? I know. Where that? Where, says who? 
says who? right exactly your, your 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 local neighborhood guru <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's laughable I, I that is so that's like saying that's like telling god oh 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 you're going to open these doors for me but but i can't do it cuz the guru told me i can't i mean right. that's so oh. I, I i i laugh at that but that's the first thing that you should be doing is re up well first you do what god tells you to do Amen. let's start with that well, let's presuppose he says, keep going. And I want you to plumb for, you know, the resources. Then you do it. You ask him, okay, what next? What next? Um, but again, there are people out there, as you guys both know, that believe in their minds genuinely that, oh, you know, gold and silver are the thing, but nothing else counts. Right. I'm sorry. How, how does that work? So you believe in gold and silver, but every mechanism like currencies, bonds, cryptos that are backed by the same thing don't count make that make sense for me right uh, the, that makes, the they, wicked is stored up for the righteous right yeah come on yeah, I just yeah it's, <laughs> I, I i say you laugh at that and just you know have a nice day because it's, well, okay by the way we were, like, bitcoin is bitcoin we've heard all kinds of reports about bitcoin what, what's your take on it i've been studying bitcoin and i can tell you not a hundred percent, but but a high degree of probability is a good way to put it. Bitcoin is going to have a period where they go up and then they're going to tank. And then Christians will have the opportunity to do buy, sell limit orders on it and get it almost at nothing. It's going to skyrocket. I don't know if it's going to be at the end of this year or into the next year, but in the short term within the next six to I don't know, 14 months, we'll say conservatively, yeah. it's going to go way, way, way up because it's, it's, it's being used. Um, it was, it was used by the bad guys for a while, but just like you're seeing uh, the bad guys turn on each other and going right. to the good side, you're going to see that happen financially as well with regards to Bitcoin. So, I mean, not everybody needs to have it. Not everybody's supposed to have it, but for the ones that God says proceed, Right. If you if you position correctly with buy sell limit orders, and that takes some education to, and rhythmic timing to know what you're doing, it, it's an excellent opportunity. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. stuff. Oh my gosh, John, uh, uh, I'm I'm just uh, excited <laughs> about <laughs> everything good. that you shared, and I pray that those that are listening had ears to hear yeah. what God was saying through John. Um, and all this information. I mean, we're. I believe that we're in a, a, an exciting time. Such a, it's, it's such an exciting time to be alive, because of what God has planned before us. You know, signs, wonders, the supernatural. You know, all this stuff. We didn't even talk about the med beds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes or no? Is med beds a real thing? Yeah, they're they're real. They're real. I, I have a friend in my group that I was talking about of, of knowledge. I'm going to keep his name private, but uh, end of 2022, his buddy served uh, two tours of duty in Korea and Vietnam. He then worked in the Department of Defense, and he's dealing with some pretty severe health issues right now. His buddy over in California had stage four pancreatic cancer, and mm -hmm he gave his spot up to his friend because that's what Marines do. They, they serve each other. You know, they're very selfless and code of conduct honor. So he gave it to his friend. His friend went into Walter Reed medical center in Virginia where they have them. They have them in other places too, but I'm just giving a concrete example. Uh, he went in within a day, his red and white blood C T cell count went up 200%. was completely healed. And he's now walking with his wife in a park that he hadn't been in in almost a decade because oh. he was bedridden. So, no, they're very real and people will get access to them in the proper time. Right. Amen to that. John, where can people find you? Um, because I'm sure that there are people that have been trying to copy your site and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and yeah, telling the that. viewers that, you know, uh, invest in me and all this stuff. We yeah. get garbage i've I've got to shut down our comments and i thank you for uh telling me that before yeah um, please started mm -hmm. yeah i have to shut down our <laughs> comments because it's ridiculous they're saying that i mean we even had someone contact uh and uh, i know this girl she's one of my best friends saying that they were me i mean emailing saying no i am francine 
And she said, yeah. uh, no, you're not, you know? So this is happening out there. So people have to be aware and have discernment, don't they? Yeah, of course. Well, we always do with everything. I mean, that just means that we're over the target, that we're, you know, that we're a threat. And that's a, in its own way, it's a perverted, a perverse compliment. So to your question, um, first, I would recommend people go to my Telegram channel, me and my, my business partner, Chris. It's John Dowling in the real world. You guys are on it, so you can you can share that. Yes. Um, because we put up great articles, factually based articles, not our opinions, not our feelings, yes. what's it. really going on. Some stuff, oftentimes we're blessed to get stuff before you know, it goes completely viral. Sometimes we get it when it's viral, but it's, but it's truthful information. Um, we're on rumble just at my name, John Dowling. Uh, we're on YouTube again, John Dowling in the real world. Uh, same, same thing with bit shoot, uh, same name. And, uh, we are in the process of creating a platform on X because X is now becoming a safe enough place to play in the minefield. unlike it was yes. before. And it's funny you mentioned that Francine, cause I just looked at my rumble the other day and uh, my friend, uh, Nicholas Vinny um, somebody is cloning our channel to be him. And I'm like, uh, that's not me, you know? And so, you know, it's somebody created a telegram channel with us. We don't eat, we're not even part of that. It's a live chat. That's not us. So this wow. is, this is happening all the time. I mean, I got uh, not two months ago, I had to change my email because um, some troll replicated another truther out there whose name I won't mention. Right. And replicated his platform verbatim and yep. acted like he was that person coming after me, mm -hmm. threatening to sue me and to come into my house and take oh my laptop. Gosh. I mean, it's it's the level of the enemy's attacks right now, because we're over the target, because we're telling the truth at critical mass. This is um, you know, I, I had just recovered, <clears throat> as we talked about, from a pretty nasty a respiratory virus the last couple of weeks over the holidays, the enemy is throwing the kitchen sink because he knows he's running out of options. He knows the walls are closing in and it's a caged animal. Uh, but that's where people can go to uh, to see my real content and, and Chris. And uh, um, we're real grateful for the followers that we have. Um, we're Our audience is much like yours, critically thinking, discerning, wanting the truth, trying to get to the center of the bullseye and doing everything that they can to prepare themselves to be successful in this new transition. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I believe that the Lord allowed you to come on, um, not only to our show, but to the scene, you know, in this arena, in this mm -hmm. realm, um, mm -hmm. for such a time as this, because this is where, you know, people are, are, are starting to waver a little bit, you know, they're, Oh, you know, this has taken way too long, you know, and, um, yeah. you know, but it's just like weight loss, right? I mean, if you gained all that weight, it's not coming off in, you know, a week or two. Yeah. It takes, there's a process in all that, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's perfect timing, perfect timing. God's timing is always perfect, right? Never, never late, never early. He doesn't do it when we want him to do it, but he always does it when we need him the most. And to your analogy, Francine, of weight loss, um, once your body starts acclimating, its its uh, metabolism is right size, you start losing that weight, maintaining it, and getting a healthy balance over time. The encouragement I would have for your viewers is, yeah, this is all taken longer than we wanted. This has not gone the way we wanted because it's not about us. It's right. about him and what he needs to do through it. He's testing us to make sure that we can really handle. This isn't Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't $50,000 we're coming into, okay? Right. This is trillions, not for everybody. Some, you know, Johnny Enlow we talked about has a great video yes. on this I recommend people watch. He talked about it about eight months ago, I want to say. You can look it up on Elijah Streams. Kingdom millionaires versus kingdom billionaires. Different classes, yeah. not different yeah. quality people. Not everybody's meant to be a billionaire. Not That's everybody's crazy. meant to have $10 million. You need to think about when you bless your family, you need to put boundaries and limits, make it clear it's a one-time thing, use the trust so it's not in your name, another benefit. Right. And think about the amount you're giving commensurate to what they've made. I'll give you an example. My cousins in South Florida are primarily teachers. I don't ask them what they make, but I can, I'm a fairly smart guy. I can put things together. I'm thinking they're probably making somewhere in the realm of 40 to 60 grand a year is a pretty good guess. Split it and say 50 cost of inflation, what have you. 
So if I gave them $10 million, first, first of all, they're not believers yet. So mm-hmm. I, that would be casting pearls before swan, right. Right, number one. Number two, I'd blow their heads out because they've never seen that kind of money before. Right. Versus if I give them $250,000, $300,000, they can say, okay, that's you know five, six years worth of work that could supplement as my retirement, what right. have you. That's manageable. That doesn't, it's, it's, in, it's impactful, but it's not overwhelming to a degree that they can't handle it. You have to, you have to give in accordance to God obedient, God's obedience and, and managing expectations of what people around you can handle. These are other ways that you can practically prepare right now that don't cost a dime except for the currency of your time, which is arguably our most valuable asset anyway, that we share and give and use and all that, like what we're doing right now. But, um, you know, all that is to say that, and, but we're talking, there will be trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in this wealth transfer. It's, it's a massive, incalculable amount. And I don't want to argue with people about that can't happen. It, it's going to happen. It just might not be meant for you specifically, but don't begrudge somebody else who does. It's a lot like, um, you remember, I think it was in the Old Testament where God put a set of field workers out there. And some yeah. of the people had been there 10 years, 20 years. Mm-hmm. And, and then he brought people that were there a month and he paid everybody the same. Right. And you had some people that were griping. Well, why does he get that? I've been here 20 years. And Jesus was like, what's it to you? Right. So I say, what's it to you people if somebody else makes that? Why? Are, that's another mindset change that you must make. This jealousy and fear and bitterness and competition. That's not of God. Okay. I'm going to give people, and I'll, I'll shut up after this three practical tips that they need to do before the wealth comes in, not after change your mindset, take action. And so where you prosper now, it's going to sting for some people, but if your church is not where you prosper, you don't have to tide there. Mm -hmm. If, If your mentor is prospering you, if the homeless person that you meet gives you some wisdom, um, you know, somebody blessed you at a grocery store with knowledge as an example, Yes. You can tithe there. That's where you prosper. The people very- like Currency 365 have prospered me, not just financially, but spiritually and emotionally, which is why I'm going to quietly tie to them. So right. <laughs> those are some seminal examples. That's so good. So positive. Alan learned that oh years ago when there was a prophet that came into um, the church and and basically he had a successful insurance company. Right, babe? Well, yeah, he had an insurance company, but he had he said every major person in the ministry that's on TV, I did. And I, I knew them all personally. I tithe all this money and everything. And then he said, My my actually my business was not growing. And I don't understand. I know this principle works. So he said, the Lord challenged him and said, find somebody who can't pay you back. And bless them. Find a single mom who needs what you know groceries. Find somebody who needs a set of tires. Whatever he said when he started doing that, mm. he said it exploded. He had more business than he could handle. So yeah. you know, take it out of the four walls. You know, I know a lot of po- pastors are not going to like that, but I don't really care. It's <laughs> right. God's money, and it's His principle. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right, Alan. And 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 a little quick line that my mentor Don gave me a long time ago when I started this. Money makes you more of what you already are. Money doesn't define your character. It reveals it. It brings it out like refiner's fire. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's so good. So good. And uh, again, I'm going to have all of John's information below. um, So you'll be able to just uh, click on that and go directly to his uh, websites and his music too. We didn't even touch on that, but... (laughs) Guys, you know, he shared some of his uh, music links and Al and I were like, man, he's really good. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I know that you're going to have Derek Johnson on, who's also a musician. So um, I don't know, maybe you can in the background have the the piano and him on the guitar and do some picking or something. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see what we can do. Definitely. When we meet in person, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Well, um, I'd like to, honey, would you say a prayer for those that maybe have not made the decision to receive Christ as a savior? Sure. I'll start it off. And if John wants to join in or you or whatever. Okay. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time together, Lord. Mm -hmm. And like my wife said, if you're out there and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is the that is a principal thing. That, that is the key thing, a thing that you need to do to have assurance of eternal life. Uh, Father, uh, just uh, Holy Spirit, move on their heart and mm -hmm. just open yourself up and just say, you know, you have to admit that you're a sinner. We all came into this world as, as sinners, but God made a way out of it. He, yeah. If we come to him and repent of our sins and accept the, um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, uh, if you really mean it and say it in your heart, and start living that Christian life, uh, that that eternal life is is yours. So yes. um, take the time now and do it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Amen. And and also he has the Holy Spirit for you. And that's just like what John said, you know, walking into a dark room and then flicking on the light, everything becomes so bright. And, you mm -hmm. know, the the word talks about just ask and receive. And if you believe it in your heart, it is yours. Does it mean that you'll never go through anything? No, but when you go through something, you'll be victorious going through it. Because if he brings you to it, he's definitely going to bring you through it because he's here for you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the word that is his promise to you. So like Alan said, all you have to do is just ask him to come in and receive him as Christ the King, Jesus Christ the King, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our Messiah. And when you receive him and acknowledge that he did die and resurrect again on the third day, I'm telling you, you're going to feel, some people feel this like freedom. They feel like a washing. You may feel that. Some people may not feel a thing, but as you walk it out, you'll start to see things shift in your favor. So I believe today is the day to where you say, yes, Lord, Jesus Christ, I receive you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He is good. He is faithful. John, <laughs> wow, what a broadcast, my brother from another mother. I'll tell you, I feel like <laughs> you, you get, get us all fired up here, especially me. I mean, you can't tell, but you know, it is there. <laughs> it is there. Looking forward to have you on, on again. Let's, um, you know, uh, make a date of having you on uh, sure. next month and, um, you know, in March or, or February. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot more exciting things that we'll be able to share and encourage the people. So thank you, my brother. Any any uh, passing words that you want to share before we head off? I can't. I mean, we emptied the vault pretty well. I know. So, Come on now. Um, just, you know, this event was meant for, for those who are listening who are, I'm, I'm presupposing, are already believers. This event was meant for you. The world may not have had you in mind, but God did. Mm -hmm. And he, he keeps his promises 6,000 times in the word, yes and amen. Uh, I know it's been rough. I know it's been for some of you have been in as long as I have or longer. Mm -hmm. um, we've all suffered in this. We've all lost people on the way, but that's in its own way a blessing because the Lord said, when you're suffering, you're suffering in his name. And that's a privilege because then that's what interlocks us with the Lord even closer, helps us relate to him better. Not that we'll ever know the full weight of his struggle, but we can begin to understand um some of the things he dealt with on earth and that he went ahead and paid the price for as you guys were praying i was thinking he paid a debt he did not owe and we owe a debt we can never repay right. and you know in my in my early christian years i used to think that um you know suffering or going through hardships was a burden now i realize it's a blessing um so fight the urge folks to be down or don't look at what your physical eyes see, but what your spiritual eyes need to see. And that this actually is a really terrific time if you can see it properly and have an attitude. I, every day I do this out in the field when I walk with God, have an attitude of gratitude. If you spend the time to itemize the things that he does for you every day, 
you'll find that there's a lot more things to be grateful about than there is to complain. And uh, by the grace of God, go us all. Amen. 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 John Dowling. And I'll put all the links below. Woohoo! Bless you, brother. Thank you. God bless you both. See you soon. All right, you bet. God bless you, everyone. We love you. <laughs>